Hello, Poppets. So in our last class together, I asked you guys to be able to draw uh, the basic structures of a neuron. I'm going to draw the model answer for you and uh, briefly discuss um, some of the functions of this. So this is taking your answer, but it's also moving into the next section, which talks a little bit about cellular signaling and how information is actually passed down along the neuron. So remember that the neuron has something called a dendrite, which is like the branches of a tree. And the dendrites are the areas of the neuron that actually receive incoming information. And one neuron might be connected to thousands of other neurons simultaneously, um, which is why you've got lots and lots of dendrites coming across. Now, on every dendrite, you're going to have receptors. And the receptors are basically what receive the communication from another neuron. Remember that neurons don't physically touch each other. They're separated by something called a cleft, the synaptic cleft. And what actually uh, allows communication is going to be chemicals called neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters would basically come across, if this was the uh, cleft here, they basically diffuse along and then they pop into the receptor uh, going back to that old lock and key idea that you guys had in basic biology. So um, you have to have a very specific neurotransmitter which would then go into and activate a very specific type of receptor. It wouldn't activate any receptor. It's specific to the one that it would fit into. And again, that's your lock and key. So the neuron, the cell body, is like any other neuron that you've learned about in your basic biology class. You're going to have a nucleus and you're gonna have little mitochondria and all of those other aspects that stays the same. To carry the information along, you're going to have an axon, okay? And here, if you want to think of this at the neck, this is something called an axon hillock. And the axon hillock basically is the uh, aspect of the neuron that decides whether or not to carry information further. So if I've got uh, neurons down here that are saying, yes, let's excite, let's create action potential, let's get this to carry information forward. But I've got neurons over here that are saying, no, 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 I don't want that information to go forward. They're both talking to this guy at the same time. So assuming that information is coming in, it basically comes here to the axon hillock and the axon hillock receives the information and it does what's called a computation. And you can think of a computation as a basic addition and subtraction kind of equation. It looks at overall, with all the information coming to me, both excitatory and inhibitory, which one is stronger. And if it is excitatory, then it will start action potential here. And if it's inhibitory, then it will stop action potential from occurring. Now, if action potential does occur, it'll travel along the axon. And remember, action potential only ever travels one direction, okay? It's always gonna travel the same way. Some of the axons are gonna have myelin sheathing around them, and in the peripheral nervous cent uh, system, these are Schwann cells, and in your central nervous system, these are oligodendrocytes. And basically, what the myelin sheathing does is it allows the action potential to jump. And remember these spaces here in between, these are called nodes of Ranvier. And it allows the action potential to jump from node to node so that it's quicker in its transmission, okay? Now, assuming that you've got action potential traveling along, it's gonna travel along the axon until it gets to the end. And what you're gonna have are things called an axon terminal. Okay, that's down here at the base, an axon terminal. Now these axon terminals are going to contain within them little bubbles 
called vesicles, okay? And these vesicles contain neurotransmitters themselves. And these are the chemicals that would again eventually diffuse across the synaptic cleft. So if we have caused an action potential to occur, it travels along the axon, jumping from node to node until it comes to the axon terminal, and that causes the vesicles, which contain the neurotransmitter in them, to release that neurotransmitter, which would then come into the dendrites, of an entirely different cell here because it's going to have the receptors. So the chemicals contained in this neuron would diffuse across, hook into the receptors following that lock and key principle that we talked about before, and then continue to uh, propagate or potentially inhibit the action potential further. Okay. When you are talking about communication between two neurons, so this is the presynaptic neuron and this is the postsynaptic neuron, this is called neuronal transmission, okay? When you are talking about carrying an action potential along an axon, that's called propagation or conduction, okay? Don't get confused by these terms. If we ask how is action potential propagated, they're asking about how would it be carried along the um, axon itself. But if the question was asking you about uh, discuss neuronal transmission, that's talking about communication between two separate neurons. And that would be done using this chemical process here, which is transduced to an electrical process at that axon hillock we just discussed. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit more detail later.